Is anyone else? Someone's here. Yeah. Well, hello. It's good to hello. see everyone. Mostly familiar faces. There's a few new ones, but a few, few growing faces. <laughs> but uh, it's good to be here. I hope you've been praying. I've been praying. A few weeks ago, I was blessed with my fourth child. His name is Caleb. And uh, just about after he was born, wasn't just in about two hours, I got a call from Ryan, and he was just uh, telling me he was praying for the baby, asked how he was doing, and, and I kind of thought that was a coded thing, because right after that, Ryan, uh, Pastor Price, asked me if I would be interested in coming down uh, to South Florida, to Fort Lauderdale. you got to be kidding, of course. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and cover a few services for him. They said they were going to be going overseas, but then they said where they were going, and that changed everything. I wanted to go too, and that wasn't fair, and <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're, man, I'm excited for him. I'm, I'm really happy for him. He, he, they don't get blessings like this all the time, and they deserve them, so I pray for them. Pray they'll enjoy themselves. Pray they won't worry, and uh, I pray for the services as well, too. You know, I, I've been praying the Lord to do something great. I'm encouraged just to, just to be here. You know, I've still never been to a service in Miami Beach, so my first service, I'm a little intimidated by I'm going to be preaching at. So if you'll pray for that, that'd be that'd be uh, an encouragement to me. Uh, we'll just start with a word of prayer, and while we're doing that, after we pray, you can open up to the Gospel of Luke, and we'll be in chapter 18 tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for blessing your people. God, thank you for bringing us here tonight. Lord, we pray for this service, that you would have your hand in it. God, that you'd be glorified. Lord, we pray for your blessing, but most of all, Lord, we do ask for your presence tonight, that you would bless us with your presence, and Lord, that you'd speak to us from your word, and that we'd all be encouraged by it, something we could take home and uh, use throughout the rest of the week, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. There's a story told of a woman who had lived in the south side of Chicago, and uh, she was a poor woman, didn't have many friends, didn't have uh, very much money, had no family in this part of the country. She went to her landlord around winter time. She had been having a problem with her air conditioning. It stopped working, and this is, if you understand where Chicago is up north, it, it, that meant that uh, she was in for some pretty rough weather coming up in the next few months, and she contacted him in hopes that her landlord would do uh, the right thing in helping her fix this air conditioning so that she could have some heat in the, the winter months coming ahead. She left him messages, she wrote him letters, uh, but this landlord cared nothing about this woman, cared nothing about the building, and no matter how hard she worked at trying to get in touch with her landlord, she didn't get a response. And so this woman, having uh, very little understanding on, on legal matters, didn't know anything about the law, didn't understand what steps to take, she decided to take action all by herself. She went to the courts and she uh, told her problem and uh, she got herself a court date and a case so that she could uh, force her landlord to fix her heater, her air conditioning, so that she could have some heat in the winter months. They assigned her a judge and the day came when she would go to court. And so she gets into the courthouse and uh, immediately the judge looks at this woman. He knows exactly uh, what class of people she is. He throws the case out immediately. He doesn't care about this woman, doesn't even waste time listening to her. But she comes back pretty quickly and uh, reschedules another date, and, uh, appeals the case. And again, the judge sees her coming in. And this judge, uh, he, he, he looks at this woman. And, you know, the story goes that, you know, he, he's reading and he, he listens to her, pretends to listen. Immediately, again, you know, just dismisses the case. Doesn't waste much time. But this woman knows something about her circumstance. She knows that this judge is the only one who can help her with her case. She knows that this, uh, w without this judge changing the circumstances of what she's going through, that she, uh, she may not even make it through winter because she has no heat. And so she decides to, that she's not going to give up. She continues to persist. She continues to push forward. And this judge eventually, though he cares nothing about this woman, he cares nothing about uh, what she stands for. He eventually, he sees her coming back time and again, 
you can see it on his face, he begins to get a little embarrassed, you know, and that eventually turns to anger. And though he cares nothing about her, cares nothing about her circumstances, eventually this woman wins her case. She gets the, she gets the heater, she gets through the winter months, and everything goes well. Of course, you, you know the passage that we're looking at tonight, and I, I have a confession to make. It's not a very uh, surprising one. That, that story obviously is not true, is it? I just made it up. Huh. There is no woman that lives on the south side of Chicago in particular that I'm aware of that ever went through this particular scenario. In fact, all I really did was take a story that Jesus told a long time ago, and I tweaked it a little bit. I put some uh, modern vices to it. But when you listen to this story that Jesus gives in Luke 18, you really kind of relate to it, don't you? I mean, all of us have gone through things in our life, haven't we? When, uh, when, we, uh, when we need something, and it seems like things just aren't going our way, and we can easily get wearied and begin to doubt. But this story teaches us something. It teaches us, in particular, about this idea of confidence and persistence. In the Gospel of Luke, in chapter number 17, Jesus has been heading up to Jerusalem. He's been going this way for some time. In fact, I think it began all the way back in chapter number 9. This is the final leg of his journey. He's just about there. And he's been talking to his disciples, and he's been sharing a lot of things with them. Uh, but by the time we get to chapter 17, Jesus uh, is talking with them, and he, he tells them that he's going to be going away. He's not going to be around much longer. He says, I, I'm going to leave you. And, but then he says this, I promise that one day I'm going to return. I will be back. I will come again. But you can just imagine what's going on on these disciples' faces as they're listening to Jesus. As he begins to tell them that he's going to be leaving them and going with, some of them begin to doubt. They begin to uh, wonder where he's going and what's going to happen when he's gone. And Jesus anticipates this. He knows that these disciples are going to struggle. He knows they're going to uh, wonder, you know, what's, what's the next step for us in our life? What does God have for us next? And so he begins to tell them in Luke 18 that when he leaves, that they need to be confident. And they have every reason to be bold when they come before the Lord. Why should we be confident? When we pray to God, when we ask God for things, we need to have confidence. But the question is why? Why should Christians have confidence when they pray? And that's the question that this chapter this story that Jesus gives his disciples, that's the question that this story answers for us. In Luke 18, Jesus tells the disciples that when you pray, you need to be confident. You need to come before God with boldness. He says in chapter 18, verse number 1, And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He says, when you come before the Lord, you need to come before Him in faith. You need to come before Him with confidence, knowing that God is going to answer your prayer. And in order to get this idea across, He tells them a story. He gives them a parable. The, the parable is about an unjust judge, a selfish judge, a, a judge who cared for no one but himself, and a poor, helpless widow. In, in verses number verses 2 all the way down to verses number 6, we, we read about this story. The first person in our story is the judge. Here was a guy that uh, should have been the person that anyone that could have gone to to get justice. He was the guy that uh, was uh, up, supposed to be upholding the law. He was the one that was supposed to be taking care of the, the needs of the people. And yet when you read this story of this judge... That was exactly the opposite of what this man stood for. Jesus didn't spend a lot of time describing him, but he says two things about this judge. And the, the first thing was that the judge, he cared. He, he wasn't a Christian. He wasn't saved. The Bible says that he did not fear God. He cared nothing about the, the things of God. Therefore, he, he probably would have cared nothing about the things of the law, right? 
Uh, he was selfish. He cared for only himself. But it wasn't just God he didn't fear. Therefore, if he didn't fear God, he obviously didn't care about people either. And if he's not going to fear man, he obviously isn't going to fear, or excuse me, he's not going to care about this woman. If you want to boil down what this judge stood for, in verse number 6, Jesus gives an adjective to describe this judge. He was unjust. He was a selfish judge who's whose character was marred by the fact that he cared for nothing but his own selfish purposes. And so that's the judge. We, then we are introduced to the second person in our story, and that's the widow. But we're not told what uh, the struggle in this widow's life was. We don't know what she was going through. But what we do know was that something had happened in her life. Maybe her husband had died and somebody had been keeping the inheritance from her. That's what a lot of people think that read this passage. Hey, maybe it's some financial thing that was going on. Somebody was uh, trying to steal her inheritance. I really don't know. The, the, the fact is it doesn't matter. But what does matter was is that this widow had a need. And she brings her need before this judge. And what happens when she, and the, the judge immediately he throws it out. He doesn't care. In fact, what's interesting is that the judge describes himself exactly the same way that Jesus describes him. Look, look what he says in verse number eight, in verse number two. We begin the parable. It says that there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither did he regard man. And there was a widow in the city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But look what he says within himself. He says, but afterward he says within himself, exactly what Jesus says of him. He says, I don't fear God, though I fear not God, and though I don't regard man. Yet because of this woman's persistence, because of her tenacity, because she continually comes back and she just won't leave this guy alone. She's pestering him so much that eventually this judge, this selfish man, probably an atheist who cared only for himself, this guy says, you know what? She bothers me. And he gives her what she wants. And he says this, he says, I... Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And so the widow wins. She wins her case. And the judge grants her her request, and her need is solved. And so that's the story of the unjust judge and the widow. And so far, so good, right? We have a, a great picture of a woman who's taken care of. Look what he says in the next verse. Jesus says in verses 6 through 8, he begins to discuss what the purpose of the parable was. You know, at this point in the story, as we read the parable, uh, a lot of people, they, they like to look at this parable, uh, and they, they listen to it, and they say, they look at it kind of like a simile. You know, they say, you know, this is great. The, the, the widow, uh, she, she kind of stands for us, and God, well, he's kind of like the judge. He's not unjust, but, but you know, the, the poor widow, she, uh, she comes before the judge, and you know, if we would just come before God like this poor widow, you know, if we just kind of dig our feet in and we just kind of keep coming to him like this widow, just kept pestering the judge, just kept coming towards him, that, that eventually God will give us what we want, just like that judge gave to that widow. And yet, when we read in this verse, Jesus says this, he says, hear what the unjust judge saith. And can I tell you something, friend, that if... If that is how you take this passage, that you've got it all wrong. Because as Jesus is describing this passage to his disciples, he's trying to show them what a widow can get from a terrible guy like this judge. Be just because she was committed to doing so. And you and he says this again, and, and don't don't miss it. He says, Look at the unjust judge, the one who doesn't fear God, the one who doesn't fear man, this judge who cares about no one but himself. And he says, if, if this widow can get, a, get a, a request answered from a guy as, if I can put it so mildly, from a jerk like that, 
then how much more? He says, how much more? Shall not God avenge His own elect, which cried to Him day and night, though He bear long with them? The idea here is kind of like a comparison of opposites. God, can I tell you something, Christian? We are not a poor and helpless widow. We are the, we are the chosen people in Jesus Christ of God. Did you know that? Do, do you know that God loves you more than anything in this entire world? I think you do. But, you know, sometimes we forget that. This widow had nobody who cared for her. She was all alone. She had nobody who was providing for her. She stood all by herself. And Jesus is trying to explain to us that we're nothing like her. If a widow who had absolutely nothing could get what she wanted from a guy like that, he says, how much more, in a sense, if I can throw that phrase in there, would it go for God's children, whom God loves, whom God cares for? How much more will God avenge His own elect, which cry unto Him day and and not. What is the purpose of this story? The question was this, why, why should God's people pray with confidence? When we come before God in prayer, you know, do you know why we should pray with confidence? Why we should come before Him boldly every time we pray? As you read this story, I hope you can begin to understand that the reason we should be able to do that is because God wants to answer our prayers. And God, He really does care about us. And friend, he is not like the unjust judge. He is not like this man. God is the righteous judge. God is the judge the, who wants his children to come unto him. He is he's the, the God in heaven who is waiting for you to, to, to pray unto him. He's waiting for you to come unto him and he wants to answer your prayers. But you know the sad thing is that the way this story ends, or transitions, if you will, it, it, is, it ends in a question. Because although that's true, although God's people, we, we ought to come before God with confidence. Why? Because God really does care about us, and God uh, wants to answer our prayers. Even though that's the case, that most of the time, many of us don't do that. We come before God, we, we don't really believe that he's going to answer our prayers. Me and my wife were talking about this. I said, you know, so many times we, we do it out of duty. We come before God really not deep down inside believing that. I mean, we, we, we hope God's going to hear our prayer. Right? We really want him to, but there's this kind of doubting inside. It's like, is God, are you, are, you really, are you really listening? And yet I think the reason that happens is that so often we forget how much God really does care about us and how much he really is waiting in heaven to hear our prayer. And Jesus asks this question. He says, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Although this is true that God will avenge us speedily, he, he will bring us justice, he will answer our requests. Although God is listening and waiting for us to come before him. The he's asking, did, are, when I come back, will, will any of you be praying like that? When I return, is, is, that, is that how it's going to be in your life? And you know the truth is, it, it, it's so many times it's not. And I'm not being hard on you, Christian. That, that's, I've seen it in my own life so many times. And that's because sometimes I, 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 know, I know in the Bible, I know how much God loves me. But sometimes I, I fail to apply that into my daily life and really hold on to that in confidence. And what's another word for confidence? Another word for confidence is faith. When we come before God, we don't come before Him really believing that God wants to hear our prayer. And so, tonight as we begin looking at Luke 18, next week I want to kind of, this was kind of almost an introduction into the chapter because I want to finish it out next week. My favorite part of the chapter is coming up, which is, is, is what I want to look at next Wednesday night. Well, tonight we really looked at why we should pray. You know, why should we come before the Lord in confidence? Well, it's because God really does care about us. Why should we come before God uh, in faith, knowing that God is going to answer us? Because God loves you, and because God wants you to pray unto Him. 
I have four children. And I imagine what it would be like, you know, if my kids came before me, Dad, I really need this, you know, I really want this. And yet, you know, I say, you know, it's okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. But, but can you imagine if they came before me and they just, you know, they, they weren't sure, you know, uh, you know, I, I really want to ask, the, you know, Dad for this, but I, I you know, I don't, I, I want them to come before me in confidence. I want them to come before me believing that I love them and I want to answer their requests and to meet their needs. Next week, I want us to look at uh, what that looks like. What does a prayer of faith look like? Uh, we're going to look at an example next week of what, what it doesn't look like. And then we're going to look at a good example of, of what a prayer like that really does look like. A prayer of faith, a prayer of confidence. And so with that, uh, I think we have prayer requests, don't we, tonight? I want to transition into uh, prayer requests. Yeah. I just got a text.